فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My brothers, my sisters uh, This is a beautiful evening and uh, I'd like to address a very, very important subject, and that is the subject of charging for the Islamic events and the religious events, lectures and so on. It's a topic that needs discussion because many years ago, I was one of those who believed that it was actually wrong to charge for an Islamic event. But I was young and I didn't realize that every event has costs. The venue costs money. The preparation costs money, uh, the salaries cost money, the volunteers and the people, not always are they available to work free of charge. Uh, transport costs money, food costs money, logistics costs money, and the sponsors are not able to actually sponsor full amounts all the time. So I grew up in an environment where people used to just have the events in a masjid. And that's it. And uh, in a lot of the masajid, unfortunately, there was no place for women. So and not only women, but a lot of people wouldn't come readily to a masjid uh, for certain events. And sometimes the politics within masjids is so bad that people don't attend a masjid just because the imam there wears a cap that happens to be a different color. So uh, this type of problem happened to be in every community and society. As I grew a little bit older, I realized that not everyone had the facility that I had. Not everyone was able to have a an income that was separate from their activity for the faith and the religion. Uh, there were people who had to work as imams and get a salary. And they, they've been there all along. There are people who have to work as scholars and get a, a payment. Uh, because that's... That's how they would survive. How do you expect them to survive when they have a wife and children, uh, rents to pay, fees to pay, bills to pay, and uh, nobody is ready to sponsor them. And a lot of the times the scholars of Islam get less than one-tenth of the salary of an average person who works out there uh, who might be a doctor or an accountant or something of that nature. So it's, it became uh, clear that, you know, in a lot of communities and a lot of countries that we visit, these costs are not met by people. Uh, the people who sponsor have become more and more uh, selfish in the sense that they want their logos, they want a say, they want to be, uh, they want to do it their way, uh, they want to manage it like a business. They they sometimes actually spoil the entire event by uh, having conditions that are not appropriate. So in order to avoid all of that, what was the simplest thing to do was to give everyone who attends the opportunity to invest in their hereafter by giving an amount towards their own benefit of the hereafter. Whether it was $5, $10, $20 or $50, sometimes even more depending on which country it was, depending on what exactly the activity is and depending on so many factors. Uh, you know, the costs of bringing scholars from overseas sometimes is tremendous. Like I've said before, I for one uh, do not charge in any way. Uh, I'd expect a community that can afford it to cover my uh, accommodation and perhaps uh, transport if they could afford it and if they were the ones who invited me. But otherwise, I'm sure most of those who've mixed with me, interacted with me and worked with me would realize that it's not about money. In my case, actually, I wouldn't mind contributing if if the need had arisen uh, towards a cause that I attended, you know. Uh, and that's something that I, I'm mentioning, not because I want to brag about it, but just as a point of encouragement. And because so many people pick on us, uh, they should know that sometimes we spend our money uh, on you because we are the ones who would pay for a lot, a lot, actually, that you would benefit from and then you still want to make a noise to say uh, all these scholars are charging and these scholars are for dollars and so on. Uh, unfortunately, it's a sign of success. When people accuse you of that which you are not guilty of, you need to thank Allah because that goes to show that the Almighty is testing you. When I did good to you, I didn't do it because I thought you deserved it. I did it because I know that the Almighty loves those who do good and I'll keep on doing it. So even if you do bad to me as a result, 
it's okay, it doesn't bother me because I didn't do it for, uh, for you in the sense that, yes, you might be a human being and you will benefit from the goodness, but I did it for the pleasure of the Almighty, maybe to, for the benefit to reach you indeed. But we do it because we love each other for the sake of Allah, or at least I love you for the sake of Allah, even if you don't love me. I love you for the sake of Allah, meaning if you don't love me, it's fine. Uh, because my love is not connected to your love, it's connected to my love for the Almighty. I know the Almighty made you, I know that the Almighty uh, expects me to treat you in a good way, uh, and so on. So, uh, recently there is an event that is uh, going to take, that was advertised to be taking place in the Philippines, for example, and I received some messages from people saying, oh, do you charge, and so on, and I don't charge. And some said, well, why is there a charge? And even if I'm not aware of it sometimes, uh, at times there is a charge because it's Allah giving you the opportunity to contribute. Sorry about that. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you the opportunity to contribute towards something very, very great. And you need to realize that shaitan will come to you and make you spend the same money on a dessert. Uh, and you will complain about how, oh, $20 is so much, but when you went to buy a pizza, you just spent $40. So you ate it and you didn't realize that the spiritual food was actually a greater bargain, but you complained about it. Come on, think about what I'm saying. Uh, so subhanAllah, if you were to pay 20, 30, 40, it's not even, it's priceless. Actually, you cannot put a price tag on it. And a lot of the times if I were to attend, I'd like to ensure that it's free. Uh, if we find sponsors, so if you're willing to sponsor, please contact me. If you're ready to give 20, 50 thousand dollars or huge amounts that are required for transport, accommodation, the hiring of facilities, and it's not possible to have it at a masjid all the time. Remember, masjids are the houses of Allah. There is a certain sanctity, respect of the house of Allah. You cannot just come there and do as you please. Uh, also, a lot of the times, like I say, a lot of the masjids have politics, very unfortunately, where uh, they, they are very uneasy to have certain people there just because those people may differ with them in certain matters. So to have a neutral venue, to have a posh venue, a lovely venue, why should Muslims settle for that which is mediocre or that which is very low in terms of standard and quality? Why? And we should have the best facility. We should have that which is top. Pay the $5, pay the $10, consider it an honor. Pay a hundred dollars and buy 10 tickets and give the others to your friends uh, if allah used your effort and your money to guide even a single person perhaps uh, like the hadith says it's better for you than anything material that this world can have uh, so remember don't let shaitan overtake you by making you think that you know what they're ripping us off they're not they are not ripping you off. You are supposed to be spending your wealth in a good cause. When last did you spend on your own spiritual upliftment? When last did you spend on things? You, you know, the Islamic applications, no one wants to donate sometimes, or if people donate, it's just $2. But uh, you advertise something to do with a worldly uh, you know, benefit, and people will spend $1,000, $500, even the wealthy. They, they will give $10,000 to a cause that doesn't really need the money and they won't give even $100 to a cause that will need the money at times. The reason is Allah probably does not want that money. Maybe it's ill-gotten. Uh, Allah doesn't want that money in His cause because it might be dirty. So when you don't want to spend for your own benefit, for your spirituality, for the deen, when you want to complain about the $5, the $10, the $50, then you should ask yourself the question, why am I complaining? Uh, did I meet the costs? Did I sponsor? Did I encourage anyone to sponsor? Do I know the costs? Did I contribute towards the cause? Have I, do I trust the people who are uh, engaged in this? And uh, if I don't want to participate, I shouldn't. But... If I really believe that this is a good cause and it's a cause of the deen after thinking about it, then even if you're not going to attend, please donate, please uh, buy tickets and make sure you give it to people. So it's important for us to think of these things. And this is why I've been meaning to address this topic for a long time. But today I thought I'd, I'd spend about half an hour on it, maybe less. My brothers, my sisters, think very carefully. Uh, when you are being asked to pay uh, for attending an Islamic event, a religious event, please, please look into it. Make sure that you spend. Okay. Now some people say, well, Islam is not just for the rich. I agree. That's why we put it online. That's why we make it available. That's why it's sometimes uh, 
beamed live. I always encourage people that if your tickets are all sold, then make sure that you beam this live across the globe so that people can benefit. Sometimes if before the tickets are sold, if people know it's going to be broadcast live, they won't even buy the tickets, not realizing that the venue itself was maybe uh, $10,000 for the two days or for the day. I know some prime venues much more than that. I know of venues that have costed thirty, forty thousand, seventy thousand dollars. I'm talking of prime, huge, five star venues, and uh, trust me, they've been full. And subhanallah, they've been uh, a great success. Why should we settle for something mediocre? So don't say that we're only facilitating for the rich. I've been to the poorest of communities, the poorest of communities. So don't come and give me that, subhanAllah. And I'm sure a lot of my colleagues have been. You know, we have, if you go to the doctor and the doctor charges you, it doesn't mean they don't do good work. They must be not charging a thousand other people. But they charge you, it doesn't make them bad, so what? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. So what I'd like to say, my beloved brothers and sisters, is... Uh, for example, tomorrow we have an event, East London Mosque, in the evening. It's totally free, open for brothers and sisters uh, from Maghrib to Isha. It starts off at 7 p.m. and then Salat al-Maghrib. The talk will be after Salat al-Maghrib and after Salat al-Isha there will be a book signing. So that's a free event, mashallah, tabarakallah. Nobody's uh, looking at those. So we haven't counted the number of free events that there have been. We haven't looked at how much money we have spent on muslim central for example thousands of dollars a few sponsors yes how many people donate to muslim central muslimcentral.com providing you the 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 largest online audio library and subhanallah have you donated but you've benefited from it you've benefited from it you know why you haven't donated because you haven't thought about it and sometimes you think about it and you think others will donate why others when are you going to donate even if it means one pound one dollar even if it means 10 rands or whatever it might be a currency of your uh, you know that you're using so don't think about others you might just be rejected by Allah perhaps Allah doesn't want your money it might be contaminated so I would be very frightened if I were told that you know my money is rejected because the idea, the way I... I mean, someone contacted me from the Middle East, some of the uh, people who were uh, who work there, and they were telling me, you know what, all oh, this is such an expensive event. My brother, so if it's expensive, you spend $100 and buy tickets for five people back at home. Why not? Why don't you gather a few people and sponsor the whole event and make it free? Like I've said, I, that, had ha that has happened in Nigeria once where... There was a sister who bought all the tickets and she decided now it's going to be free for everyone else. So, wow, subhanAllah, who would think that would happen in a country like Nigeria? It did. And it has happened in other countries where people look and they say, look, I don't want my logo. I don't want my name. I don't want anything else. I'm doing it for Sabilillah. I don't even want people to know who I am. But I'd like to spend this money in this beautiful cause. So my brothers and sisters... Uh, you know, we need to make sure that our money was used not only for pizzas and not only for accessories and makeup, not only for handbags and shoes, not only for cars, not only for cigarettes and, and what else, uh, although that's like terrible, but that's what people do. It. To go to the Shisha Lounge, we wouldn't mind. We would spend uh, so much. But uh, five pounds for a Muslim event, uh, we would complain and we would discourage others from going there. But you encourage people to go to the Shisha Lounge, to go for desserts, to go for everything else. And subhanAllah, even just to waste time to go on an outing and so on. I'm not saying it's prohibited to go on an outing, but I'm saying think. Think very carefully. Where would you like your money to be spent? When the hadith says one of the first things you're going to be asked is, where did you earn your money and where did you spend your money? Your wealth. So where did you earn it? Where did you spend it? I would love to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I earned my money in a good way and I've spent it on Islamic events, transport, accommodation, helping people, and at times also, you know, uh, on my family and so on. So subhanAllah, don't think for a moment that the scholars or the ulama or the people out there, you know, they're out there to make money. That's not the case in the majority uh, of, of uh, you know, circumstances. In the majority of cases, that's not actually what happens. Uh, a lot of scholars spend their own resources, subhanAllah, and so many volunteers I know of organizations that struggle. They're doing really good work, but they struggle. There's a lot of cutthroat uh, tactics at the moment within and among Islamic uh, organizations where one might uh, say about another that, you know, don't help these people, but they're doing good work. Sometimes it's just because we are in competition with the other. Once I was listening to a certain scholar 
And unfortunately, the mistake he made is he said, I want to be the biggest name in Islamic, uh, you know, uh, Islamic lecturing and Islamic da'wah, etc. Uh, I want to be bigger than this guy, this guy, this guy. And I thought to myself, that's a mistake. Don't compete with others in that sense that you want to be bigger than them. Say, I'm going to do this fi sabilillah. If Allah allows it to grow, inshallah, one day it will be the biggest, maybe. I am working dedicatedly fi sabilillah for the sake of Allah. And Allah will give it growth. The growth is not... If I say I'm in competition with someone else, I'm going to want to see them go lower than me. And that's the failure. Let's see people go higher. We're all working. We're one team. We should be loving one another. We shouldn't be hating on one another. So uh, this is a very important uh, evening. I've taken the time to actually tell you that my brothers, my sisters, donate towards Islamic events. If you have wealth, sponsor these events. It's becoming very, very difficult. Uh, you know, come out with that wealth and, you know, ensure that you've donated an amount, not always to put your logo. It's not wrong to put a logo and to, to say your name there, especially if it's coming off your tax and so on. But try not to, you know, publicize who you are. Do it fi sabilillah and come in not as a VIP, just as a normal person and see, can you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did you donate? So it's not always wrong to have uh, to have a charge. Like I said, I discourage it. I know in my country it wouldn't work in most cases, but I think we need to uh, start it, uh, you know, in a small way to say, look, you pay a dollar, pay whatever you can and pay for others who cannot afford it. So I was telling one of the brothers that when you have an online registration, you say five pounds per ticket and uh, that's for your ticket and donate towards those who cannot afford it. So you donate another 50 pounds towards those who cannot afford it. And that's another button there. Subhanallah. So we'll have a button uh, saying, I cannot afford it. That's one. Another button saying, I can afford it. Here's five pounds. And another button saying, I, I would like to pay for those who cannot afford it. Wow. I think we would actually do very well. But subhanallah, I hope we spread this message far and wide because we need to talk about it. It's an honor. It's an honor to pay towards an Islamic event. I, I used to think otherwise just some time back. And now I've realized, you know, there are costs involved. We're spending a lot of our own money. Uh, we're spending a lot of uh, resources that and it's tough sometimes. You know, we don't have to go with a begging bowl to people to say, We'd like you to sponsor, 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 and then be like the underdogs where those who've sponsored you dictate the pace and so on. No, the people who are going to attend can, can share this. And I remember once when we didn't charge, I actually received some emails saying, why was there no charge? We actually were looking forward towards contributing towards this beautiful cause of the deen and so on. And, and I woke up to say there are people who look at things very, very differently. Some people look at it and say, what, what an honor. And other people look at it and consider it a punishment. And some people go out and discourage people to say, oh, that sheikh is stealing and this one is robbing and this one is... No, you don't want to pay, don't pay. But subhanAllah, let the cause of Allah continue. Let it, go, let it f progress. Don't be a person who blocks others from what Allah might have put in their heart. At the end of the day, what is it? It's $20, $10, $5, I mean $50. Come on, that's uh, different people have different levels. So uh, sometimes even just to filter people, I know here in Britain, they say a five pounder is nothing. It's nothing. Actually, five pounds. They say that's n people don't really charge five pounds. And I'd like to drop it to one pound. Subhanallah. Uh, I'd like to encourage people to drop it to one pound. Uh, like I said, personally, I don't charge. So subhanallah, no one can come and tell me, oh, you charged so much. I didn't charge a penny. If anything, I've spent my own money, a lot of cases, subhanAllah, my own resources. I've done things myself. And you know who's benefited? All of us. I've benefited, you've benefited, we've all benefited for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, my brothers and sisters, remember this. You know, we, uh, I, I was very, very hurt by people who actually tried recently uh, to discourage others from attending an event in the Philippines just because of a charge they had, whether it was a to equivalent of $18 or so, you know, they have uh, 1,500 seats, they have a lot of costs, and on top of that, if there is any surplus, it's going to be used for a good cause. So wouldn't you like your money, your 20 bucks to be spent in a good cause? You know, not always pizzas, not always burgers, not always fast foods, not always your shoes and your clothes and all your accessories and your perfumes and so on. If you had to just look at your face and look at your, 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 your body and what you wear, the amount of money you've spent on the outward beautification, how much have you spent on the inward beautification, subhanAllah? How much money have you spent on the interior, on your deen, on your hereafter to live this life and 
and for people to appreciate you for the next day or two, you're already spending so much money. But what about for, for your hereafter that is everlasting? You're not prepared to spend $20? And like I said, it's not just for the rich. The poor can hear it online. They have the audios. They have the live streams. They can sit in the comfort of their homes. It's going to be posted. I record a lot of my own talks. If you see me with my phone pressing a button, it's to record it for you who might not be able to afford the attendance. So I'll upload it on Muslim Central immediately after in most cases so that those who were not able to attend or couldn't afford the attendance would actually be able to benefit from it. So don't come and tell me we only did it for the rich. We did not. It was done for everyone. Everyone. It has reached far and wide. You have a million views in a week. Where were they? Where did they pay from? If they all had to pay 10 cents, we would never ever need to charge for an Islamic event again. I hope my words have encouraged you. I'd like to come back one day uh, very soon to discuss this issue again to remind people. But please, Spread this message far and wide. I'm going to upload it onto YouTube, inshallah, shortly. And I'd like it to really uh, go uh, as far as, you know, the north and the south, the east and the west, in order for us to be able to spend on a good cause. Uh, may Allah help us to change the way we look at these things and to be able to spend in the cause of Allah. If this is not the cause of Allah, what? is the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless you all. And I, I know I was a little bit serious, no jokes. But inshallah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys uh, very, very soon again sometime in, in, in the obedience of Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.